Beijing saw 276 days with good air quality in 2020, up 100 days from 2013. That is according to the latest figures. The average concentration of PM2.5 in China's capital city was the lowest measurement since the data was first collected seven years ago. What's been done and what more do we need to do to keep it that way? Joining me today in Beijing is Yan Bonke Lloyd, Director of Air Quality Monitoring at IQ Air and from Washington, D.C. Chang Hua Hu, Executive Director of the Professional Association for China's Environment. Uh, welcome both of you to join the point. Uh, let me go to you first, uh, Director Wu. According to the Beijing government, Beijing saw, like we said, nearly 300 days with good air quality. Uh, what do you make of those figures and how accurately do you think uh, those figures reflected um, the air quality in Beijing? Uh, what accomplishment? I think we definitely need to salute to all the efforts Beijing municipal government has made, particularly in the last three years, by literally winning the battle uh, for clear blue skies. That's what's officially named actually in the document there. Uh, the, the outcome, uh, very impressive, uh, meaning actually uh, the government has managed to achieve uh, you know, better air quality. Uh, measured by days of blue skies and also, you know, reflected by the concentration of key um, uh, of air pollutants, uh, particularly measured by P PM 2.5 there. Uh, it is convincing, there's no doubt about it, because all the data monitoring system have been in place and literally we've been reporting daily, uh, sometimes even an hourly sort of data there. So it's very impressive. Uh, but also we know this is accomplished with a very you know, integrated strategy and a united front. And uh, you, you know, the government has managed to put the policy incentives uh, regulations together and uh, supported by literally monitoring uh, to the last, I call like one uh, microgram per cubic meter at that level to make sure uh, you know, the government will be able to drive through the commitment by looking at cleaner energy uh, options to replace coal and more restrictive uh, you know, measures around vehicular exhaust and also really scaling up uh, uh, you know, electric vehicles there. And in the meantime, of course, watching closely the sources uh, you know, of dust and other pollutants there. So in and all, I think Beijing definitely has demonstrated its leadership and uh, has made its accomplishments so far. Yeah, I would say uh, really drastic measures uh, to ring in the use of coal, uh, to name just a few of those measures. Uh, Yan, let me go to you. There has always been questions about the authenticity of data coming from the Chinese government. Uh, what is your company's result of monitoring the air quality of Beijing last year? Was that largely consistent with the China's uh, you know, official data? Yes. So. Um, first of all, the data, of course, uh, makes a, a lot of sense and also can be corroborated by other sensors, like, for example, from the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. So the, the, but I think the most important is the reaction of what you can see in people. Uh, I've been a resident of Beijing for like quite a number of years, and I remember seven, eight years ago, uh, some of the really bad air quality days that we had, we could hardly see uh, like a few hundred meters away. And those days actually are no more. So that's really a very, uh, I'm very glad for this uh, ma major improvement. Uh, the other thing is also that I remember, like for example, like checking the air quality app on, on several times a day. Now, this is something I hardly do myself, even though being into the air quality business, because the, we can see on a daily basis the really the major improvement in uh, Beijing air quality. Right. Uh, Mr. Yan, uh, Director Yan, rather, uh, let me go back to you. Uh, do you think in terms of air quality and the environment, um, major Chinese cities such as Beijing and Shanghai still have a lot of uh, a bit of catching up to do with their you know, peers from the rest of the world? Yeah, so um, my role is to monitor air pollution around the world. So I have uh, a pretty good view on about 6,000 cities around the world. So yes, Beijing does need to further improve as well as Shanghai and so on. But I'm very glad to see the trend. I think what we really need to look at is the, the trend and the speed of uh, reduction in emissions and pollutions. So we uh, last year, as we released our annual report, Beijing actually dropped out of the top 200 cities most polluted cities around the world. And this trend is uh, going on and Beijing is actually further going down the list. So this is like a clear improvement uh, compared especially to many other developing uh, cities around the world. Of course, there's still a, a big amount of work to be done to reach some of the 
uh, more international and uh, well-developed cities. But I think what we need to look at is the trend and really, really hope that uh, it continues mm -hmm. at this uh, same pace. Right, right, right. Uh, that's the hope of many, uh, especially those uh, who reside in Beijing, such as myself. Director Wu, um, you know, many are asking this question. How did China uh, manage to pull this off, to engineer this, you know, engineer this turnaround uh, in terms of air quality? Uh, we all remember pollution was so bad a few years ago, and then there was this war on pollution. Uh, what are the things that uh, China did right? Uh, I probably will uh, summarize the, the strategy around uh, four things. The one uh, is clearly set the targets, the goals and the targets uh, around the pollution, around the you know even sources of pollutions there. Uh, secondly, I think it's integrated strategy, integrated in a way not addressing single pollutants separately, but rather addressing uh, you know all the major air pollutants in an integrated manner and also from regional perspective because air right it's not like one city's air quality it's just limited to you know one particular city so you have to take into consideration around the regional uh, perspective there and the third i think it's uh, 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 you know, it's a sort of a call like a united front, right? The government started to emphasize in the old society's participation, uh, you know, with the transparency, disclosure of air quality on a daily basis, even more frequently than that. Uh, so the society has this sort of awakening, right? And we all have a role actually to play to improve local air quality there. And lastly, I, I want to really emphasize the driving through endeavor. It's not just this talk as, you know, languages on the paper, but rather really deep dive into the reality I call it the last one microgram per cubic meter, say, trying to figure out how to address that. So in a nutshell, I think the forefront of the strategy definitely have, have made mm -hmm. Beijing, and, uh, you know, uh, its air quality more blue skies these days. Uh, but in the meantime, one thing I do want to emphasize there, and uh, so you know, the achievement made so far uh, is a going average. There's more effort that's going to be needed because, uh, you know, if you look at the gap between WHO, World Health Organization's air quality guidelines there, uh, which is around like 10 microgram per, per cubic meter every, every year, Beijing today, I say it's about 38 or 39. So we still have a long way to go in order to get much better, much healthy air quality. Right. Uh, yeah, let me go to you in Beijing. Uh, what obstacles do you see standing in the way of, you know, improving the air qualities of cities such as Beijing uh, even further? Yeah, so if we just look at Beijing by itself, uh, I think the government can do so much, but I think we really need to look from a, like a broader perspective in terms of geographical area. So it's about uh, tackling the pollution problem in uh, nearby provinces like Hebei and so on. So uh, the you can't like tackle p pollution just by looking at a city, but really from a global, um, let's say, come from a country perspective, with having also the proper energy policies in place. Right, uh, and then Yan, ch you know, China has you know uh, released its goal of reaching uh, CO two emission peaking at uh, 2030. That is 10 years from now, and uh, carbon neutrality in 2060. Uh, how do you look at that, that goal? Is that too ambitious? That sounds very ambitious at first, but I mean, we've seen uh, some of the commitment that has been done in terms of, for example, pollution reduction. They have happened. Uh, the government has put uh, the right investment to make this happen. So I believe those are very ambitious targets, but I think sometimes we need to give ourselves, or in this case, the government needs to give itself a very ambitious target to really try and put all the all the workforce to work out for mm -hmm. this, uh, for reaching it. Uh, Director Wu, what do you think of China's uh, carbon goals and what would that mean for China's economy and economic structure going forward? Uh, it's very ambitious, there's no doubt about it, but that's the only way to go. The global community has decided to work together to achieve carbon neutrality by mid of the century and China is part of it. And it's fundamental in a way, we started by talking about air quality. There, there are tremendous co-benefits actually between uh, energy policy, climate change policy, and also air pollution prevention policy there as well, because you know we know the sources of pollution is there. So there's tremendous sort of accessible benefits of the policy target itself. Secondly, this is a really radical uh, sort of decarbonization process that the government has decided to pull through. Uh, this is not simply about reduction of emissions. It's about how we grow our economy differently, how we build a different infrastructure to support uh, you know, zero 
zero, potentially zero carbon uh, down the road, and in the process really develop the technologies, the industries. So this is fundamentally about economic transition. So we cannot treat it as simply say, well, I have the obligations there, I have to uh, reduce the emission, but rather it's a more fundamental radical transformation. Right, uh, we have about uh, 30 seconds uh, left. Uh, Yan, uh, what would be your final piece of advice to you know, Chinese environment officials who might be watching our program on you know, making our air cleaner? Uh, I think uh, a big part of uh, the role they have done is to raise awareness for people to be aware of uh, how they also pollute and can reduce their emissions. So making, I think, uh, everyone involved in that fight for pollution, I think, would be very important for them. So like buying electrical cars instead of uh, like petrol, uh, diesel type of cars, uh, really being a lot more careful in how we consume. I think that's what's going to make a long-term impact for China's emission. All right, thank you, Yan Bonki Loy, Director of Air Quality Monitoring at IQ Air, and uh, Wu Changhua, Executive Director of the Professional Association for China's Environment.